Hi, my name's Mark from Hampshire in the UK and I've spent the last 12 months or so converting this Fiat Ducato panel van into a camper van of our dreams. It's a short wheelbase, so we had to be quite creative with how we did the conversion. So I look forward to showing you around and some of the things and solutions that we did to make it work. Okay, let me show you around the van. So most people who do uh, camper van conversions use the L3 length of this van. We use the L2 because of various space issues in terms of parking it at home and that meant we needed to maximise the space inside the van for living and then as well as sleeping and everything else. So starting with the front and the cab area we fitted two swivel seats. We've got the single passenger seat um, and we installed a low profile bases as well so that when we're sat driving the, the total height of the seat is the same as it was from the factory and having these swivel round like that gives us a nice open area here when we're parked up and we can use this for just chilling out in the evening. I've also got a uh, lagoon mount here for the table so I can put a table here and then sit here looking out the window and working away on my laptop um, and then in the evening it's feet up watching the, uh, the screen on the sliding door. So this has given us loads of space here. I also built in this shelf for putting our uh, feet on, resting our feet on and it's also got a, um, a heating duct there which I'll come on to in a minute. The rest of the living area is um, over this side opposite which is our seating area. So we've got a L-shaped sofa here which means that we can have plenty of space to sit next to each other to have dinner or um, it, like I say in an L shape putting our feet up and relaxing in the evenings. We've got another lagoon mount with a table here which means that one of us can work with the table like this with our laptop or we can sit here and have our dinner together and these lagoon mounts are really cool they're really flexible and really stable um, so we really like these and then the sofa again you can sit back and chill in the evening um, and, and there's plenty of space here um, and it just feels like a nice big square living area rather than um, a lot of conversions we see are quite narrow so it's quite like a corridor and um, this gives us a nice big square area here. I'm Nate Murphy and I have literally just bought this van to show you how to build a van. We have made a really detailed course which will help you go from this to this. You will learn everything you need. We help you specify your electrical system and you'll be able to access a community all building their own vans at the same time. So that's the kind of living, sitting area. Uh, moving on to the kitchen, we've got a full depth worktop, so 60 centimetres deep worktop, which is what we wanted to maximise space for sort of prep area. We've got a dual burner gas hob here and then a sink uh, over this side with hot and cold running water. Um, and then on this side, we've got a little drawer below the hob, which just gives us a little bit extra space for cutlery and things like that. It's quite a shallow drawer. And below that is our Dometic fridge. Um, and then in the middle, we've got four drawers. So for these, um, the drawer boxes I actually ordered online because I wanted to make sure those were really stable and sturdy and they're on soft closed hinges. But the drawer fronts and the handles and everything else I built, as well as the, uh, the carcass for the kitchen. Um, when we're driving along, I've done a bit of a clever trick with an electromagnet. So basically when the engine started, there's uh, magnets behind each drawer. They engage and then they hold the drawer shut while you're driving. And then there's a switch if you forget, um, you know, the engine's running and you want to get something out of one of the drawers, a snack or something, you can flick the switch, they all release and you can open the drawers. So that's um, been a really good um, solution to rather than having clips and things like that. And then over this side, we've got our cupboard. So under here, we've got all of our storage of, um, you know, like buckets and bags and other bits and pieces we want out of the way there. Um, and then above the kitchen, we've got these overhead lockers. So two of those, um, I made all of these myself as well with uh, sort of soft closed hinges and things, little shelves. So this is all of our like crockery and uh, cups and mugs and things like that and our Omnia oven, which is amazing. And then this side, I won't open it because it's full of uh, snacks and food and other bits and pieces. But these are really handy here. Dual LED lights, um, down lighters here, so we can see when it's dark, um, plenty of space for preparing. And then the worktop is um, a laminate worktop, solid laminate, so it doesn't expand and contract and warp. Um, it's pretty tough to cut, but actually it's a really nice uh, finish. Then the back of the van is the bedroom area, and this is where we had to get really creative because most of the vans have an extra 60 centimetres and we didn't have that but we also wanted a double bed and we're also both six foot tall so we needed the the width so the first thing we did was build these cutouts which you can see here um, which gives us an extra 10 centimetres at the head of the bed 10 centimetres at the foot of the bed therefore we have nearly 1.9 metres of width of the bed so we lay that way and um, so we can lay head to toe no problem 
Um, and then the second solution, which was the complicated part, was an extendable bed, a sliding bed. So when it's time to go to sleep, we pull the bed out like this. And then there's two mattresses here. So one comes down like that. And then roughly, <laughs> I won't make the whole bed, but you get a full width double, full length double bed here. Um, and then obviously the seating for any kind of storage and, and clothes and stuff like that. So we have um, kind of the best of both worlds, proper full size, comfortable bed, but then a decent seating area and living area during the day. And it doesn't take too much to kind of put it down and take it up again in the morning. So it's really super easy. And then the final part over this side, two upper cabinets, which have got clothes and other bits and pieces in this side, towels and things like that. Um, we didn't want to do too many upper cabinets because we wanted to keep the space available. So just two on this side and two on this side. And then the final feature is our ceiling. So it's a slatted ceiling, um, which was quite a challenge to make, but we think it looks really great and really sets off the van. And I think having the wood effect or real wood in the van against the painted uh, finishes really makes it homely and warm. Okay, so we've also got some storage under our seating area in the living space so over here under this one um, we've got a little portable toilet for emergencies but that um, just gives us a bit of peace of mind when we're on the road um, and also provides an additional um, seat as part of our l-shaped sofa and then underneath this one which i might not be able to lift up too high we can actually access some of the storage in the garage area so additional you know water bottles and other bits and pieces we can actually reach from there and then underneath this seat here we've got a truma boiler um, which provides all of our hot water and our heating, which comes from a vent here, a vent under the uh, driver's seat, one at the front there and also one in the garage. So one of the important considerations for us was security while we're sleeping in the van and generally to protect the van. So some of the things that we've done is buy these uh, chains, which basically clip onto the two front doors and the sliding door, and then they hook over the existing mount points for the seat belt. So it just means that if someone's trying to get in while we're asleep inside, they're not gonna be able to pull the door open and it will give us a bit of warning. These are really cheap and, and we're really pleased, gives us a lot of peace of mind. We've also installed um, some CCTV cameras, just cheap Amazon Blink ones, which work really well. Um, we've got a, a router in here, 4G router, which means we can check the van from our phones and also have it notify us if there's any movement. And then the final thing we installed was a bear lock, which basically means that the van goes in, uh, you put it into reverse and then there's a lock and you kind of lock the van in reverse, which means that should anyone break in, they can only go backwards. Um, so if you park the van against the wall or you make sure you, you know, a tree or something like that, then uh, the van is totally secure and in theory shouldn't be uh, taken anywhere. But it's just an additional peace of mind, particularly as I've worked really hard over the last year or so to build this van and I would hate to see anything happen to it. So this is the garage area of our van and one of the things with the L2 shorter wheelbase means we do have less space here because we don't have the fixed double bed, we've basically just got a fixed single bed width here. So we've had to be a little bit creative with our storage. Um, but over this side we've got our electric, um, so that's our battery, um, inverter, shore power, fuse box, uh, battery to battery charger and uh, mains charger. So we've got 200 amp hours of lithium in here, which is fine. And we can be off grid for maybe four or five days with minimal uh, power usage, which is fantastic. And then over this side is our water. So we've got our water filler point and then we've got a ball finch shower point here, which gives us like a mixer tap. Um, so we can have sort of outside showers should we need it, but we don't use that, that uh, too often. Um, and then the filler above it. And then in the middle here, we've kind of got uh, storage boxes for all of our hoses and stuff that you need, the ramps, picnic uh, blankets, and then this is a pop-up shower tent, which we can have at the back here um, for a bit of privacy. A uh, pop-up shower cubicle just cheaply off Amazon which just flings open um, should be fairly straightforward and then that gives us sort of some privacy if we need it and then we've got a bullfinch shower point which means that we can basically plug the shower straight into the van and then it's got a mixer tap functionality and we bought a different shower head so we can have an on-off switch 
which allows us to control the shower. This thing, this is so annoying. I want to put that down now, we don't need to see that anymore, do we? <laughs> okay, so we bought a uh, portable shower tent, which basically just flings open um, nice and quick and easy, usually. Um, the water's heated through our Truma boiler. We've got a 25 litre fresh water tank and the Truma boiler holds 10 litres of hot water, which is more than enough for a quick shower. So a little hack I've got for sitting outside having dinner and stuff like that where you need a little bit more light are these um, portable um, magnetic rechargeable LED spotlights. So basically they adapt in terms of angle. There's a hook on them so you can hang them or you can literally just put them up on the van like that and then they come on and then they just provide a nice little bit of light over your table uh, while you're eating and then you can turn them off and enjoy more of the mood of the evening where, without having that glaring in your face. So externally we've got an um, underslung LPG tank which is 20 litres of LPG which means that we can have uh, a hob inside but we've also got a barbecue point underneath the van so it's a bullfinch connection so you literally just plug it in, twist it round and then we've got a Kadak barbecue here which allows us to be uh, using the barbecue without faffing with coals and things like that which is nice um, and the other feature outside the van which I love is our wheels which is a treat for me when I finish the conversion to make it look really uh, smart and uh, a little bit more off-road and a bit, more, a bit less like a panel van. Hope you've enjoyed the tour of our van. Um, I had no previous experience before starting this van build and if you don't, but you're thinking and considering converting the camper van for yourself, definitely recommend it. It's been a really rewarding experience. Um, you can check us out on Instagram at Our Van Plan and we're also on YouTube. I filmed the whole build video there. So check us out over there, Our Van Plan. Um, and thanks for coming along. You may have noticed that you can buy our ebook. Our ebook shows you how to build a van conversion. It has 190 pages of text, diagram, and images showing you various options or various systems. It also comes with 25 videos that show you hands on how to do many parts of building a van. Also, we have a course. The course is really in depth. It shows you everything from how to use basic tools all the way through to doing your gas, your water, and your electric installation. Not only that, but within the course, we support you hands on in making your electrical specification. And you get to join a community community of like-minded van builders who are building their vans at exactly the same time. Follow the links to find out more and thanks for watching.